Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, attend our workshop. My name is Debbie Bell and I'm the CEO of the Mothers Matter Center. Our workshop today is called Resilience Exemplified, Lessons Learned from Vulnerable Mothers During COVID-19. Overcoming the challenges of a global pandemic requires resilience and hope. Two qualities that are diff difficult to hold on to during uncertain times. Isolated and vulnerable mothers who enrolled in the HIPPI program defied those odds. Despite the disproportional impact of the global pandemic on their lives, they proved to us that they are a catalyst for change in their homes, community, and society. Today, our panel will present its Mothering Dur During COVID-19 discussion series between Madame Sophie Gregoire Trudeau and Mrs. Sharon Johnson, along with hippie mothers. We will highlight the lessons learned on coping and responding to crisis and share best practices for social purpose organizations to build mother's capacity. Today, our presentation is gonna be structured as an intimate conversation between the three women who are our panelists after we watch the Mothering and COVID discussion series video. We're not gonna use PowerPoints, but instead we wanna encourage a heartfelt discussion. Each participant will share their perspectives, impressions, surprises, and affirmations that struck them during the discussion series. Our goal today is to provoke a critical analysis of the stark social inequalities revealed throughout COVID-19. The structure of our, of our presentation, I'm gonna start with giving you a background on the HIPPI program and how we pivoted to meet mothers' needs during the lockdown periods. We're then gonna view the COVID mothering in COVID video 19, and in turn, our panelists will present. Then we're gonna go over to you. But before we go any further, I want to, uh, I would like to introduce our panelists. Um, so we have Mrs. Sharon Johnston, uh, honorary patron of the Mothers Matter Center and wife of the former Governor General, Subita Nair, who's a home visitor at the Regina Immigrant Women's South Center, but was also at the time that we did the video, a parent in the program, and Suchana Bowick, who is the coordinator at the Saskatchewan Open Door Society. Without any further ado, I'm gonna start, uh, we'll start our, our presentation for today. So I'm going to, first of all, if, uh, how, there are 40 people here. Some of you may know about the HIPPI program, some of you may not, but just to give you context and bring you up to speed, I'm going to just start off by showing a little video that will talk about what is the HIPPI program and what we're trying to do, and then it'll make more sense about what we had to do to pivot for the lockdown measures. The Mothers Matter Center is there for Canada's nearly 1 million low-income mothers, newcomer, refugee, and Indigenous women. Mothers who are determined to change their world for themselves and for their children. The programs of the Mothers Matter Center find their roots in our flagship program, HIPPI, Home Instruction for Parents of Preschool Youngsters. HIPPI is an evidence-based early learning program for mothers of children aged three to five. The HIPPI magic is its mother-to-mother -mother approach. Specially trained home visitors go to mothers in their homes. Each week, for 30 weeks, they role play a lesson. A lesson in a structured curriculum tailored to the ages of the children. Most of the home visitors are former hippie mums, graduates of hippie. The home visitors become role models because they faced and they overcame similar challenges. They're able to establish unique bonds of trust and empathy. The Mothers Matter Center challenge, low-income families who are isolated 
who lack confidence, who are unable to participate in their communities. Hippy is a lifeline. Hippy works by focusing on mothers, by empowering them, by enabling them to transform their lives and the lives of their children. So you've got the two minute version of our very big uh, program that has lots of nuances and complexities. But the important point that I wanted you to get out of the video is that we are a home-based pro uh, program. We've been a home-based program from the start. And we have home visitors then that go into the home and work with the mothers every week, week in, week out. It's highly structured. March 2020 hits. We think this is going to be a one month like everybody else. We need to come up with the solution for one month or two months. And um, or did we even, could, could a program that has been traditionally home-based for 60 years even survive during a lockdown and a pandemic? The coordinators and the home visitors across the country said instantly, we are the link to the outside world for a lot of the parents we serve. So we can't stop. We have to find a way to continue. So together from the national office where I sit and, and offices like Suchana's and Subita's and all across this country, we said, what is the best thing that we can do to support our families during this time? And so the creative home visitors found ways to communicate um, through WhatsApp, Zoom. Nobody even knew what Zoom was sometimes at the beginning. We all learned what Zoom was like the rest of you. And we had to find a way to get our curriculum out. Uh, we were working in homes where sometimes there's only one device and the parent never got the device until nine o'clock at night. But we kept the communication and connection up from what we started off thinking would be one month. We got to June. June, it was clear that June 2020, we were uh, lockdowns were going to happen. We ramped up for fall 2020 and continued to change our change and adapt our service to a virtual one and which relied entirely on the creativity and perseverance of the home visitors to reach out to those families and make sure they had the connection to the outside world about so we were about eight or nine months into that and we have two very good friends in this country one is Sharon Johnson and the other one, Madame so Sophie Gregoire Trudeau. And they talked to us and said, we, we want to find out what's, okay, then I'm going to turn it over to that We want to find out what the impact is on low income, vulnerable women during the pandemic and the ensuing lockdown. So I'm going to turn it over to Sharon Johnson for a minute to talk about a motivation that we had for doing a video and a discussion series. Super, I've unmuted myself. So thanks, Debbie. Um, it was a real privilege for uh, Sylvia and myself. Sylvia and I are, in short, both mothers. She is a younger person and she has three children. And I have 14 grandchildren, all of whom moved in with me when uh, COVID started. Um, it was a real privilege. And we'll go on and see the testimony of the mothers. It was absolutely moving. But we felt it was a real privilege to be able to um, listen to these stories and to be part of, of what we might be able to do beyond um, just listening to stories, what we might be able to do in society. So Debbie, um, we'll go on with that. Sure. That's a Thank part, part later. And it was, but, uh, it was I think, uh, Subita and, and Suchana will talk about what a privilege it was for the mothers, the newcomer and refugee mothers across this country to be able to have a chance to engage with Sharon Johnston, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau, and to tell them about how difficult this experience was, but not only how difficult it was, the resilience that they demonstrated during this period. So we hosted uh, three discussion groups. Uh, they took uh, there were women from across the country, uh, hippie moms and home visitors in each of the discussion groups. And Sharon and Sophie engaged in a very personal conversation with them asking, how, how has this impacted you? And so I'll go, we'll go to the second video now and you, you'll see the mothering and COVID-19 video. And, um, and then we'll have a discussion about uh, fo following it. Well, the pandemic has upended life for millions of Canadians, but new research says women 
particularly mothers, are bearing the brunt of the economic damage. And experts fear it will result in an increase in postpartum depression and anxiety disorders. With 72% reporting symptoms of anxiety and 41% experiencing depression. And then I have to look after my son, I have to look after my daughter and I have to cook. So it started uh, affecting my mental problem. I started showing frustrations to my kids. My husband is working from home. So it was like uh, for three months without seeing anyone. And I didn't have friends in Canada because we came in July 2019. So I didn't know anyone. I don't know whom to talk to. So it was very difficult for me. This is one big family. And when we go through a pandemic, like we've been going through, it's been quite difficult for a lot of moms. And I have moms around me who suffer a lot. Um, this has had impacts on our mental health. And I really want you today to feel safe, to open up about your own struggles, because we all have our struggles. This uh, you know, lockdown and keeping us away from our friends and even our family, it's gone on so long. And so what I'd like to hear you talk about is where you are now. Seven of my grandchildren moved in with me and it was an opportunity for me to see how hard it is for the children and how hard it is for the parents. When it first, the pandemic first started, it was like, yay, get to work from home. I had one of my grandsons living with me. So I was, it was great. And then I was worried at the same time. And the social piece, I'm very social and not being able to see all the families and see the kids grow is emotional. Et puis, après j'ai vu que Mes enfants ont été affectés par que avec euh, parler de la COVID, c'est comme si la mort. On se promène maintenant avec la mort dans notre poche. C'est proche la mort, c'est proche la mort. Et j'ai vu que finalement, j'avais un enfant qui a été très affecté et il avait peur de mourir. Et là, on, on, on se retrouve qu'on n'a pas été, euh, on n'a pas été euh, préventible avant pour expliquer aux enfants, rassurer bien avant. From the day that we landed in Canada till like everything started happening really fast was only eight months. And to see my daughter go, go through so many changes like uh, the family, the country, the language, and um, going to daycare, going out of daycare. And we, we like, we lost members of the family, we lost friends and we couldn't like, be there to say goodbye like because we couldn't travel and to see my daughter leaving all of this and i couldn't like reassure her and tell her um look in six months everything will be okay uh, look like next year everything will be I, I couldn't she will ask me when all of this is going to end and i didn't have the answer and i can like i can feel her frustration i had my own experience on the pandemic when my husband he used to work 16 days in a month, but when the COVID-19 started, he was only reduced to work in a week. So you can understand the financial burden we had on our shoulders. And I was only working part-time, but I had to push up, get out of my way when I saw my husband struggling with the financial bills on the table. And I look at his eyes and all I could see is this frustration on him. And he's putting all the pressure on himself, feeling guilty that he can't provide as much as he used to. I was initially okay, but when I started working full time after my maternity leave, it became very difficult for me to manage at home. Uh, plus manage kid at uh, my five-year-old daughter, she started doing her online classes. So managing her with the online class, then doing my own work and then have having a one-year-old daughter whom I can't send to daycare because the daycares were closed uh, at that point of time. Before COVID, Celine and I used to go to a lot of mom and baby groups and that was our happy escape. We actually ended up isolating ourselves for three whole months, and that really intensely affected our mental health, our mood support, 
our physical activity, it really put a toll on us. But right now with the COVID-19, we are all staying home. And you know, the thing, the, the budget that you were spending for the whole week, you spend in half day because everybody's in the home. Kids are running, coming to the fridge, go to the pantry, open all the uh, <laughs> all the covers, you know, looking for a juice, looking for, and then they say, mommy, nothing to eat here. There's no food, you know, so, so it's so tough. I am sad hearing your stories, but I'm also positive because I think you're fighters and I think that you're you're really you're you're not just letting yourselves be defeated by this. And I think that what is special in what we've said today is that you have brought forward some of those things that the COVID's bad enough, but you also have things because of your history that make things even worse. And I just want to tell you, I love you for telling your story. We established here at the office a food bank, a mini food bank that we never used to have before as an organization. So that when those mothers come, when they are crying uh, here at the table, do we have something to offer them? Was also something that as a staff we sit down and we negotiated with food, we partnered up with food bank. I think I am a strong ma uh, mother. I am not uh, give up, not give up because uh, we have some uh, big changes uh, happening now. So we always have to be positive. We always have to be open mind and think that the health is important. But to that be important, we have to be good ourselves and that the best for us to our kids. I was brought up by some powerful, powerful women in indigenous communities. And um, I have very powerful women around me to get me through the day. So that's how I cope. I surround myself with the love of powerful, strong warrior women. I want to, to share from such a deep place in my heart to all of you, um, wherever you come from, whatever path you've been on, whatever work you do now, whether it's inside the home or outside the home, you make this country better in every single way. I, I need like a edu education for my son. And uh, under that, um, before I education for myself, yeah. I need a job. I, I, I need a job to work now, but I like to share is uh, Canada is very hell, hell matter to, to live here. I'm, I'm excited, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> don't, don't be scared to ask for help is everyone uh, uh, really, really kind to hear you. Yes, I, I, I really uh, appreciate it from that. I'm happy to be a uh, people can. It's very healthy because I feel lonely <laughs> here. Yes, and uh, home visitor is help me a lot. I complain, yes and like a job and they 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 ask why what where, where can i ask for him yes and yeah that's what i need to talk and i i i thank you for for him thank yes. you Okay, thank you. Mrs. Johnson and I were talking in preparation for this that we've both seen the video countless number of times and it never fails to move us. And we hope that it provided you with some important insight into the experience of the mothers during, well, what we thought was the last lockdown. And then in Toronto, they all went into yet another lockdown for a prolonged period of time. So I did, 
unfortunately, I forgot to introduce our panelists, and I was going to do that right at the beginning. So I'll do that now, and then I'll turn it over first to Sharon for comments, and then followed by Sabita and then Suchana. So maybe if you can just spotlight for me quickly, um, Natasha. So it's Mrs. Sharon Johnson, who is the former wife of the Governor General of Canada, a patron of of uh, our program and uh, just a great friend and supporter. Sue Chana is the coordinator of our site in, in um, Saskatoon, a brand new site and is working there to serve over 50 families. And I know they have a waiting list and particularly with the new refugees coming in, they're struggling to meet the needs. And Subita, who headed off the, the video uh, that you saw today and was a mother in the program and this year started as a home visitor in the hippie program. So Sharon, do you want to start with some comments on, on your experience with the video, what surprised, impressed, resonated? with you during those uh, three discussion groups? All right. Um, well, the very last, I think it is uh, Jan Thema who spoke. Um, I thought of her, from the time I heard her testimony, I thought about her and the dilemma that she had in saying, it, thanking Canadians for taking her, saying she was so grateful to be in Canada and at the same time having to say, which is almost a paradox, I'm having so much trouble and the tears of that woman who was uh, really suffering from isolation, we learned later, that is still saying, don't be afraid to ask for help. So I was touched by every story. Um, just to understand how I come to the, uh, the Mother's Matter Center and be involved with HIPPI, is that my mother um, got the first uh, government grant to run the STEM program, Service to Employ Mothers. And that's exactly what HIPPI is trying to do. They're trying to integrate these mothers and ultimately through the hippie program, they become employable. And so it's making them um, independent. And so I just come by it naturally. In any event, um, I was inspired. Uh, certainly I was inspired where they set up food banks, but most of all, I was inspired by the fact that they felt they could talk to mothers. They were mothers and they could talk to, to other women and know that uh, we would, um, understand their dilemma, not just be sympathetic, but actually understand it. And um, the other, some other observations of it, that was the fear of death. These, these uh, people who are newcomers and, and some of them refugees, they've already experienced death and violence in their country. So to come here and automatically be um, experiencing this and the children wanting to go home or uh, losing relatives and not being able to say goodbye, that was the same for us. We also couldn't say goodbye to relatives who might have died of COVID or any other illness, but um, it was much worse for them because they were a long distance away. They couldn't reach out and even be with other people to console them in the sense it was a death. So uh, we'll, we can talk later about short-term and long-term goals, but it really, it's a privilege to be part of the Mother's Matter Center. Um, it's, um, it's in my bones and I will say that the expression I was brought up with is the least of us is the best of us. And as we raise these mothers to be more like ourselves, to be able to work and be independent um, and raise their children, um, then they are going to be the best of us. So that's all I'll say for now. Okay, thank you. Suchana, do you want to go next? Okay, so um, I perceive this uh, research has done through MMC. Uh, what we have done to build a better relationship uh, with the parents so they can share their experience and needs with the home visitors. So we assigned home visitors to the happy families based on their first language and culture. And we have observed like that is the practice provides parents with a level of comfort and it has increased. They are sharing their experience. We're trying to support them uh, through our host organization, Saskatoon Open Door Society and through MMC. MMC has supported a lot lot uh, provided uh, tablet what uh, that is enough uh, support for us to um, doing the you know weekly session through zoom link that is going on and other uh, things like uh, we have at the beginning of the covid just uh, let you know when we started the hip hippie it was already started the covid in this world so we just uh, at the beginning of the program we attempted to um, minimize the risk of 
exposure by delivering 10 weeks of curriculum at one time. So we heard from our parents that they desire for more in-person uh, interactions and have adjusted our curriculum delivery to once every five weeks. So that we have changed, have made, um, that, that is going well to work with our parents. Okay, thank you. So we have Subita, who, who was a mother, a newly arrived mother when the COVID started and had to support her children, family, which she's talked to us about, and now supports other mothers through a COVID, still a prolonged COVID period with restrictions. So Subita, do you want to talk to us about any, first of all, uh, Impre any impressions that stuck with you after the discussion series and what is it like life on the ground right now trying to support mothers at home yeah thanks Debbie hello everyone I would like to share um basically when uh, uh, hippie started in Regina it was already as Suchana said already the uh, COVID started in 2020 and uh, and I was lucky to have hippie program at that time to talk to someone as we have seen in the video, many mothers, they were, they were feeling isolated. They were not able to talk to anyone. And I was lucky and fortunate to attend that session, that mothering during COVID-19 discussion with all the other hippie mothers. And I, I just came to know that how the people are suffering, even I was was having a mental problem because we didn't have any family over here we were new to Canada we were not able to talk I thought only I was that person but when I heard the stories of other mothers I came to know even they are suffering the same they were having financial issues uh, like a lot of people they lost a job so because of that they were not able to feed their kids they were going to the food bank and some of the people who never knew what food bank was before they have started going and taking the food from there. Even I did not know that that it was there. So uh, then I just came to know that how people like uh, first few we thought okay it will be only for few days, okay it will go. Then for few weeks, okay fine it will go then. Then it's continued for months. People were stuck in the four walls for nearly for three to four months because we all were afraid to go out because we were afraid that oh if we go and touch someone we'll get COVID. Oh, if anyone sneezes near us, we will get COVID. Oh my God, even we were afraid to go and touch the uh, button, the traffic pedestrian button, we were afraid to go and touch. I used to tell my own kid, please don't go and touch that, you will get COVID. And the kids, they were like, okay, first few days they were enjoying because they are at home. But later even kids started getting frustrated because we are not allowing them to go and meet. As a small kids, they want to go and meet people, uh, do all the naughty stuff, climb here, talk to their friends. They were not able to do. They were seeing their friends and teachers in the Zoom meeting. So even, and Zoom meeting was new for the parents as well. We never knew what Zoom meeting was. So it was new for us. Uh, we, we as a mother, we have to take care of kids, cooking, and then we also have to learn Zoom meeting and we have to sit with our kids because even they didn't know what Zoom meeting was. And basically even we started studying along with the kids because teachers will give the homework in Zoom meeting. We have to take care of that as well. So all the thing was making all the parents, especially the mothers to uh, have feeling isolated, not uh, like uh, not talking to anyone. And luckily some home visitors were there with whom we can share our ideas. They were supporting us okay, you have this problem, calm down, you can talk to us. We are there for you as a home visitor. So I think I, 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 like all the mothers who are like hippie moms, they were lucky to talk to the coordinators, hippie home visitors who used to, uh, whatever problem we used to share with them, they used to try to resolve those problems. They used to say, we are there for you, please don't worry. Okay, you have this problem, talk to us. And, and the uh, kids, they were getting the free program. And it was like for the refugees and for the newcomers, it was a free program. So that is what the attracting point was. We don't have to spend money on that. Because already, because of COVID, there was a financial issues with the parents. And then um, what, uh, they were losing their loved ones. So that also was very um, um, in the mental problem, mental, uh, that was, also issuing because okay whenever we used to hear any phone calls okay something has happened to the family back home 
so because of that also it causes mental issue and we mom if we are not healthy i don't think so all the any of our family members will be healthy if we are healthy we will be like showing love to our loved ones our husband our kids they will also uh, flourish and we'll also flourish but if we mom as like very frustrated we will like show our frustration into our kids, we'll be shouting at them. They will also feel depressed and the happy family won't be unhappy, anything. And because of that uh, discussion, I came to know how hippie is helping. And now from last fall, even I started working as a hippie home visitor because I think how this has helped, this program has helped me. I can help other mothers as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Suchana, Subita, and Mrs. Johnson. So we're open we wanted to have a dialogue today uh, we can see you if you want to put up your hands ask any one of us a question about the experience during covid about coping with that experience about the resilience that were that was expressed that is being expressed and and what do we think post covid what's going to happen like what happens after two years of off and on lockdown uh from the perspective of a coordinator and a home visitor and a and a leader in our country. So do we have any questions? A couple questions coming in. The first one, um, is it Janelle? Thank you. Um, honestly, I don't really have a question at this moment. I just wanted to say how moved I am to hear uh, the stories of the women and I. Um, I work with Regina Region Local Immigration Partnership, so I'm so proud to see uh, women from Regina and Saskatchewan represented in this in this panel and to hear the stories all across the country. I am so moved. Um, so thank you all for the work you've been doing throughout all of this very hard time. Um, I'm not a mother myself and I just hats off, kudos, all kinds of praise and, uh, and, and appreciation to all of you who are doing this work and, and to the moms. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. We do have a question from Victoria. There we go. Um, my question has to do with um, whether some of your services went online or some of your interactions went online um, during COVID and whether you think some of that will continue afterwards. You know, there's costs and benefits, of course, right? So the, one of the advantages is that, um, you know, sometimes um, people can't get out to other people's houses, for example, the, the workers can't get out to the house. Um, or, you know, people have some reason they don't want people coming to their house. So I just wondered whether there were any lessons learned about that. I'm going to start from the national office perspective, and then I'll go to Suchana and uh, Subita. We've asked that question a lot. <laughs> and not only that, our funders have asked that question question a lot so what is that that magic balance because if you had asked me three years ago could hippie go virtual i would have said forget it we're one-on-one -on -one, we're intimate we our our success is building this bond with the mother of the of a someone from this their country or not their country even just a mother who's experienced the same the same trials and challenges they have and then, as I said in the beginning, we had that like moment, and I can even remember the moment where we said, do we quit or do we try to do virtual? And we pushed by the coordinator said, no, we've got to try to do something virtual. We couldn't even figure out what that was going to be. And it evolved week by week by week, more tools were developed. We, we started saying last spring, so now what? Are we, we don't, we, we still believe in the home visiting approach. We still believe that something happens when that bond is, is formed between the home visitor and the, the mother. I, I think there was something really significant here today though, though Regina and Saskatoon started a home-based visiting program during a pandemic. Our other sites had, we're already home visiting and so they had built a relationship. So they had some, currency or whatever with the parent like they already knew them they was easy for, so we were going oh my goodness can we even start on a virtual basis and they did all that to say we it will be different going forward it will not be entirely virtual and i don't think it'll be entirely home-based either a lot of the mothers said you know it's easy for me i don't have to clean up i'm not wait you know i can do that we're in we're out we do this so so the and, and we increased digital literacy. 
which all which was a huge benefit and then we got the tablets through IRCC and some private donations so so there were those parts of it that were good but but we so we're just coming up with our model now what it might look like with with consultation with the sites but um Suchana do you want to comment on that what do you see going forward we are very glad to have, uh, like MMC has uh, supported us uh, giving training to coordinators. So coordinator job is to give the training to home visitors. And we made this successful, like show them how to interact with the parents through the Zoom call because we cannot do in-person visit. So we learn from MMC, we pass it to our home visitors and home visitors is doing and facing the parents uh, online and making them engaged, making them happy, what do they need? that is met um, coming like support came from uh, mmc for sure and uh, plus uh, we have we have realized and we all know through the research that during the covid that uh, violence uh, has increased a lot so mmc has done a wonderful job they have um, like organized or like got another fund for violence against women so recently they have uh, given some tablet and phone and internet bill they're supporting and uh, that's way like parents are getting support if they need to make any connection with anybody so they have been getting a free tablet so they can make a connection they don't need to worry for their phone or internet bill they can communicate with us or anybody do they need so that that is wonderful things are going on plus you know we are just uh, like, as I said, we are breaking our uh, delivery, what we are doing, like we are packing up all the materials and delivering to parents' house. That's break up in a 10 to five. So more often we can see the parents. Plus as a coordinator, we are just phoning to parents more often. And um, yeah, like, you know, uh, for host organization like Open Society, as we have so many different kinds of program for, newcomers come and settle down in the city. So we always make sure that they are, whatever they're interested in, come in, we are gonna help you out. And then we have realized it's helping the parents and we have found four or five uh, moms, even our home visitors uh, got uh, neglected and something has happened at home. And uh, we are getting support from BAW that project violence against women. So it, it's uh, it's uh, doing good. So, but. But we cannot wait to go our in-person visit because our site parents and home visitor we did not get a taste of it. So we, we are just waiting for this wonderful, uh, you know, interactions. So hopefully it'll get as early as possible. And and I just want to be clear: it's not MMC providing it's our funding; it's coming through IRCC and status okay. of women. No, I just want to not take credit for sure. it. But hey, Sohita, what do you think the perfect world would be post pandemic? What can you imagine? Would it be virtual? Would it be virtual and in home? Would we go back to 100% in home? As a home visitor, what do you think the perfect uh, way forward? I think it will be 50 50 because now when I started working with the parents, uh, they say, no, they are comfortable with this because Regina has never seen the, uh, what is that, person to person, how it will be. They are saying that this is like, okay, we can do virtually because we will be comfortable. As you said, we don't have to see, oh, someone is coming to my home. I have to clean my house. Oh, I have to dress up nicely. No, we can do our work. And when the time comes, we can come and attend the session. And as well, the funders, they are if, the, if the parents doesn't have the laptop, or what is that phone they are giving the tablet also that facility is given with if they are if the if their financial problem is like they are uh, they doesn't have funds so they are also providing the internet connection also to them so they are saying why should you come home because even some parents are afraid that something will happen to their kids and some parents are saying no we would like the home visitors to come home and interact with our kids but they're thinking that this is like when they will come and interact when we go in person also we'll be teaching the kids so we made sure no we won't teach the kids we will teach only the mom and mom will work with that kid so we are not the teachers, we are just teaching you. We are just, as another parent, we are coming and helping your child. So I think it will be 50-50 being forward because they have to experience as how it will be in person. Okay, uh, Natasha, do we have any other questions out there? We have one from uh, Jeanette. 
um, one of the things that I'm hearing in what's being said is, is the um, amount of fear and totally understandably, uh, Sabita, you were just speaking to a couple of fears, fears of, uh, you know, something happening and that, you know, that sort of, as we open up, is it safe, right? And then also fears about the roles of the parents and towards the children and will they maintain that role as teacher, right? So um, I'm curious, I'm working on, a, we've just started a working group on mental and emotional wellness. And so I guess I'm curious about some of the supports um, I heard you know, for, for, for the mental health side, the mental and emotional wellness side of things. Um, through this program and obviously the relationships are so important. And I heard that in what Suchana was saying earlier as well. Um, you know, the hippie, the hippie workers just saying, you know, don't worry, we're here for you. Talk to us if you have any problems, it's so powerful. So yeah, the potential of this so broadly. Um, and then I have a second question, which is about, uh, we're, we're talking about mothers and that's very important. And I'm curious if it also extends to fathers, to other caregivers as well. I'm assuming it does, I'm seeing some nods, but just if you could speak to those two things, whoever would like to, thank you. Maybe I'll just start off again. We, we developed this um, slogan sort of, it's more than a vaccine. So recovery out of COVID is more than a vaccine. I think we all thought just got to get the vaccine, got to get the vaccine and then everything's going to be all right, but it's not going to be all right. There are long-term impacts and Suchana and Supita will know that more than I with this residual fear that continues, uh, this dis-ease uh, about somebody coming in and then and then the habit of it, like I've been doing it. So. So we have started a few things. Uh, we've got we've we've partnered with Canadian Mental Health Association, and we're offering to um, uh, families, hippie mothers across the country. Uh, it's called Living Life to the Full, and then we uh, there the Canadian Mental Health Association also has a, a mental health first aid certificate. We know that. But but most importantly, we know we're not everything. Like, and we don't want home visitors to think they are everything because they, they can't be. They they have way. They're not qualified. It's not what they're there for. I mean, hippie delivers a curriculum, and then because we have this privileged position of often being the only one that's getting into a home, we have a moral responsibility to to reach out, help be that conduit between the home and the outside community to get the services that people need. And so one, yes, we know that mental health is a big issue. And I don't think any of us know how big that issue is gonna be as we slowly move out and not pulled back again. So we've, we've, got, we've got a lot of time here, I think. There's a, a time period ahead of us to be able to sort this out we will remain consist as consistent as we possibly can at the site level in the delivery of the program, trying to find every way possible. And then I think step by step, recognizing that there are long-term mental health issues in the home. Uh, we, in, we don't directly work with fathers, but because we're working in the home with families, we're able to direct the families to the, the services that they need. Sharon, what, what's your impression of the long term? What, what do you think? What do you think is going to, going to, how are we going to, what are we going to see going forward in the long term? I think the virtual uh, world is wonderful in the sense that more people could gather together, get the same message. So one message can get out to more people at one time. So the individual approach is, is important because you get into the home and you actually see it in a, in a, a more intimate way. But I think the fact that you can give a message, whether it's mental health or resources or whatever, um, I just think it's a, it's a really marvelous thing um, that you, you get these mothers. And I know when I first became sort of involved with Hippie is that the mother said, well, my, my husband didn't want me to get out and, and to be out and with other people and, and independent. And when he saw me was bringing in money, when, when the, the Hippie, receiver became the, the hippie giver kind of thing and going out there and teaching that they started to respect it and it got them more integrated. So it actually helped them um, integrate into our society where women are free to get out and work and so on. Um, but I think the virtual world 
is going to be very good for sharing. That's the last thing I'm going to say. Just, I think that uh, we can have one message for many people. I think that's going to be very helpful. And I want to thank these gals for the, the way they talk to, you know, the way you describe the program, where you're going and what you're doing. And uh, it was Habita. You, you have a wonderful way of expressing yourself. Oh my gosh, I can only imagine your children. <laughs> oh, you did, no, you, you really told it as it was. It was very, very important to be able to hear you talk. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it, right. other people. And we have a question that's come from Jan. She's asking, is there any group component to the hippie program? Uh, Suchana, do you want to answer that? Yes, we do have. So we, uh, we have group meeting. We should have done, I think, six to seven times in our program year. But uh, we are kind of increased this time as parents required more group meetings, more wanted to know. So we always ask uh, to home visitors to ask their parents what do they want to see in their upcoming group meeting. So we heard from the parents and after we just invited the expert from our city or from our province and that presentation is happening uh, sometimes 45 minutes to an hour. So it's once in a month. So that is the group meeting anybody can join. Mom, dad, uh, and grandparents, anybody come and join and enjoy this group meeting and whatever they want, they can do socializing. So. Recently, we have done like stress awareness for parents and children. It was a big uh, demand and asking the parents, we are having a hard time to taking care of our children. They don't listen to me. Everybody is at home. What should I do? So we have uh, invited, uh, her name is Connie Herman. She's the provincial coordinator of this stress awareness uh, for parents and children. So she did present it and then always uh, like asking us, any questions they come up in their mind, email to us, and we are asking the question answer to her and we're sending to parents. So yes, we have group meeting things, but unfortunately still it's happening through Zoom. We should have in-person group meeting where they are gonna bring their children. We should have give childcare and give the food so parents can go home together. So hopefully it will happen soon. A number of the sites also started uh, WhatsApp chat, chat groups between amongst the parents and that was and and they off they said wow like why weren't we doing that before because all of a sudden these parents were giving one another uh, support do we have anything else there natasha no no questions oh um yeah we have one uh, it's just a follow-up from jan uh logistical follow-up to the group question do you have multiple languages in one group Suchana? Yes, we do have uh, multiple, I can say more than that. And we, when we hire the home visitors, we just uh, taking care of it. And uh, what is the demand? Okay, at the beginning of the EPR, we have realized that lots of Syrian refugees came up in Saskatchewan. We need home visitors who is from Syria. So we hired home two home visitors from Syria. Okay, so now we need more Mandarin speaking uh, families where mom's English is very poor. Mom cannot join because of her English. Okay, let's hire Mandarin speaking home visitors. So now is a big demand of Pasto or Dari speaking language uh, home visitors. So hopefully we're gonna hire one home visitors who can speak both languages so we can take parents easily and they're comfortable to work with them. We have a comment. Uh, Deanna says, this is an amazing approach which Hippie uses with parents mentoring and supporting other parents. Hopefully with warmer weather coming, there will be opportunities for in-person activities coming up. Kudos to you all. We have a question from Molly. She asks, have you noticed caregiver burnout slash compassion fatigue in any of the Hippie home visitors? Yes. I, 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 again, because I'm in the national office, we're not, we're not at the site level, but I, but I did hear back from a site recently that this is, I think, uh, has ebbed and flowed where it's been very, you know, at some points, extremely difficult, especially when there was the uh, remote learning going on with children in the homes and parents didn't know how to sign on, get on, stay on, whatever it was. And home visits were being asked to, uh, home visitors were being asked to support uh, parents. But it's been a long, hard haul. And um, I think every, yes. Yes, there is. And, and I, I hope at a site-by-site -site level, they're attending to the needs of the home visitors. 
Mm -hmm. Agree, Suchana. Yes, I'm glad to uh, share with you another thing. Like MMC is uh, doing that, giving the training. So mental health uh, workshop that has happened for parents and the uh, home visitors so some of our parents and home visitor has taken and they are giving the feedback they are happy to uh, go in there and listening and talking their feelings and uh, you know with all over the canada with the meeting all the parents and home visitors and other thing they do i think fridays they are doing kind of not officially something they they're just talking each other, share their feelings, doing some amazing uh, kind of training or exercises when you are long time sitting by the Zoom. So it's giving through MNC and my home visitors, they are always happy to go in there and then talk to them, share their feelings and then bringing some energy from them. So these things are amazing going on. So they're happy to do that. Thank you. I think that maybe what we'll do is allow each of the panelists to say a couple of things uh, just to close off the um, the event, if unless there are some other questions. And so can we start with you, Mrs. Johnston, just a few comments that you want to make about going forward now in almost March 2022? Uh, anything that you would like to yeah, sure. I, mean, I, I would like to thank you because you say you're in the national office, but I think everybody here would say that she's her enthusiasm for Carrie and your commitment is really, you know, it's what makes this go. And so you deserve a great deal of kudos to bring all this together. I think, would everybody agree? We all think Debbie's great. Okay. <laughs> but, um, and I guess the only other thing I would say is that, you know, when COVID is all over, we'll all be doing various things and maybe getting into restaurants and so on and so forth. But for those people that are the newcomers and refugees and so on, it won't. And so all those things that they, they have when they come, they're struggling with, they will still have them. They won't have COVID and that will be over. But you know, getting to find their way around the city, getting transport, getting the kids into school, learning a language, all of those things they're going to, when you're not just coping with the isolation of COVID, but you're actually dealing with the difficulty of being a newcomer and so on. So let's just remember that when we all, are out of COVID, they aren't out of the difficulties that they've had when they've come. And uh, so it's an, it's an ongoing process. So important, thank you so much for that. And so true. Suchana, your, your last comment that you wanna leave with the group. Yeah, I just a uh, big comment to what we're a little worried, like, you know, we understand that there is a provincial plan coming uh, into effect that shortly to lift up all the current public uh, health orders in regards to COVID-19. So we are like, as a host, host organization, Saskatoon Open Door Society, would like to keep our current measures we have in place. So we are not rushing through to see the parents. Uh, we are kind of holding on and including masking and proof of vaccinations. We'll observe the situation for the next couple of weeks and we'll make changes accordingly. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to come and talk about these wonderful workshops. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. Suvita, you have a final uh, comment? I, I would like to say that, uh, as Suchana said, they're, they're lifting all the measures. So I've seen in January, and in, mostly in January, the kids were affected. Most of the kids were affected. And from March starting, they are going to take off the mask. So I hope that all kids are safe when they go back to school. That is a main concern I have. And uh, because the kids, they are feeling suffocated when they wear like eight to nine hours of the mask. Really, they feel my five year old daughter used to say, Mommy, it's very suffocating. I don't like to wear it. So when I told her they are like, it's not going to be mandatory, she was very happy. But I hope that they are safe. And the next thing they were saying was like, I hope there's no more vaccinations. So I hope that we are into safe environment after March or April. April. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to about my views and what I have experienced during the session of mothering due to COVID. Well, thank thank you. you. You've you've enlightened us all. I want to say thank you to the part our panelists today for taking your time and preparing for this presentation. Thank you for the uh, nearly 60 people who attended throughout the session. I want to salute the mothers. Uh, the mothers that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis, they are neither weak nor 
uh, afraid they have so much strength that the rest of us and determination that the rest of us can learn from and be inspired by. I want to recognize what Mrs. Johnson said that it's not over when it's over. It's going to be a long struggle and it's going to require all of us to collaborate and support refugee and newcomer mothers in, in the climb out of COVID. So that I think uh, I'm going to do to our we're right on the moment here 11 o'clock exactly so sonali do you what happens now <laughs> so on behalf of people p2p uh, i would like to thank all the panelists uh, for a wonderful presentation um suchna and subita for sharing your views um, thank you, everybody, for uh, participating in this discussion, and we will see you next Tuesday. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.